Hey guys, Loco here. I did a poll on Twitter to kind of see which one you guys wanted reviewed more, Down One versus Flamingo or Down One versus Royal Youth. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be kind of busy right now, so I didn't get to review this on stream, but I have one hour before my next meeting, so I was like, hell, I'll do this review just for like the YouTube people. And probably at night, I'll turn on stream and I'll review um, day two of play-ins anyway. So anyways, let's talk about Down One versus Flamingo. Flamingo, I'm not gonna lie to you, I have no idea what this team is. I know they have BRTT on him, or on the team, and he's a famous Brazilian player that plays a lot of Draben. Dom one. this is a team I'm excited about. I think they have the best solo laners in the entirety of Worlds, but their AD carry is kinda weak. Their support is excellent on all the star, and not so great on other champions, so... Yeah, they have a kind of weak bot side compared to their extremely strong top side. And Canyon, while he is a very mechanically talented jungler, I think he has problems in the mid game with what he wants to do in terms of what is my role in a team fight, other than just enabling Nuguri or Showmaker over and over again. So they are a team that is extremely great in certain areas, but pretty bad in other areas. So I think they will be able to take games off of anyone. It is so cliche to say that, and I hate it when people talk about Clutch Gaming that way. Oh, Clutch Gaming is able to take games off of anyone. They honestly can't take games off of certain teams, but Down One definitely has the tools to be favorites versus certain teams, while being really weak versus certain teams. So I think Down One is like a team that could take games off of mm, teams like G2, or even teams like RNG. But I also see them as a team that's going to struggle very heavily versus SKT and even the likes of TL where they can kind of match them in solo lanes and have a stronger bot side. So yeah, Dom1, super interesting team. Um, probably one of the least well-known Korean teams, but a team you guys should still be very excited for nonetheless. Without further ado, let's get started with the VOD review. Yumi ban, no one wants to deal with the cat even after the nerf. Pantheon ban, actually a ban you're going to see so often that champion is just beyond broken. Um, will not see play at Worlds because he's so good. Draven ban, a sniper ban towards BRTT. Kiana ban, a ban that kind of slipped up there for a lot of people. Like, people have been playing more Kiana and they discovered how OP she is. She was in a weird spot where people knew Kiana was strong in hands of certain people, like um, Humanoid and Caps. But for certain teams, they didn't touch it at all, and it just went unbanned or unpicked. But now it seems like a lot of people have seen the strength of Kiana and have picked it up during the bootcamp that happened. Ranked in first pick, really weird for me. I saw this from Clutch, and the draft didn't turn out that well, so I'm very curious to see why Dom1 did it also. Because while Renekton is a strong champion, he has counters in top and mid lane. So I'm very curious why people are just so down to blind pick him as a first pick even with him being a flex pick because you can just pick counters in both lanes pretty easily nico that's a counter to renek in top lane and if the renek goes mid nico can also match the rank to mid thresh early um i ha actually have no idea why i don't know anything about their support maybe he's a thresh one trick talia kaisa Wow, when I see Renekton, Talia together, I see priority, I see early game, I see a lot of proactive playmaking. That's what I'm going to expect from Dom One's draft. Rek'Sai. Flamingo kind of matching fire with fire. Rek'Sai means I'm not backing away from the kind of early game skirmishes that you guys want to opt into. So it looks like they're banning Nautilus. Let's see what Dom One bans. I'm curious where Talia goes. It can either be jungle or mid lane. And depending on what bans we see, I guess we'll fight, figure out where she goes. Zaya ban, they already have the Kai'Sa picks, looks like they're banning out ADs. The most common ban after that, I would imagine, would be something like an Ezreal. Alistar, Beryl's best champion in my opinion, a great ban. Irelia, okay. This kind of leaves them very open to pick Ezreal, which I'm pretty surprised by. I'm not sure if BRTT plays it, but it is definitely the third best traditional AD carry left, and they just left it wide open for him to take. Ooh, Caitlyn instead. Caitlyn Thresh, really good deal, especially combined with Rek'Sai. They're going to have a lot of lane pressure on whatever Kai'Sa lane um, Dom one's going to be able to make. Rise. Okay, so it's a Talia jungle, Rise mid lane. Very interesting. And Pike. Pike, Kai'Sa, can't beat Caitlyn Thresh in a 2v2, unless like they get an insane hook, which shouldn't happen in pro play, honestly. But 
they definitely can turn the lane around with a good gank with Talia, so that's what we're gonna look for. Aatrox, where's that going? Aatrox versus Renekton, interesting. I feel like they could have gotten better counters into the Renekton, but they ended up going with Aatrox. Rise top and Renekton mid, so mid lane is a much shorter lane, so even though Renekton versus Nico is not a great matchup, Renekton might do better in mid lane than he does in top lane. Usually I talk about kind of the win condition for both teams, but both teams have very very similar win condition. They have a lot of early game skirmishing on top side of the map, and down one just as a team loves skirmishing from top side of the map while leaving bottom B. Sometimes they will play for bottom early just to get them started, and then support will roam around, but they are still very much a solo lane based team and how ahead their solo lanes are is basically deterministic of if they're going to win the game or not. There's like times where they're incredibly behind in terms of the overall state of the map, but because Nogori is on like a giga carry like Vladimir and he's such an insane champion and he's ahead, they're able to win the game through Nogori doing insane flanks and insane team fights. So down one team comps, no matter what they play, like I don't really think it ever is like predetermined in terms of like this is going to be a team fight comp. This is going to be a split pushing comp. Every kind of comp they draft is going to be a Noguri or a Showmaker based split push individual based comp. They are, they play to their solo lanes. They know where they're good and they stick to it. Looks like they're starting off with uh, early invade on red buff. Rek'Sai is one of those junglers that can do a unique pack thing. He can start wolves. Not a lot of junglers can do that. But getting this red buff taken away, oh my goodness, Aatrox. This is a little suspect for me from the Aatrox. You should definitely know that the Talia started this rest side, or they at least invaded, and be extremely careful. Rex side doing a good job of replying and going for um, the enemy red. Looks like they're just going to be trading size. Oh my goodness! Oh my, like, stuff like this should never happen, like... Them getting chunked out that much, they're in a lane where they're not going to have their jungler for such a long time and Rek'Sai took your red, so you know your jungler is not going to be bot side. Like, so bot lane from Dawn 1 just had to play safe, but Pike, I guess, kind of looked for a hook there and got flayed into the trap. Like, it was just extremely silly. Nightmare situation for the Aatrox. His wave is pushing away. He doesn't have vision on this brush. He plays his ward here. So it's really difficult for him to even walk up. So he might try to Q and last hit these range minions. And if he does that, that's the timing that one's going to go on. Rek'Sai can jungle up, but there's also the Scuttle here, the Wraith here, the Double Golems here, the, um, or not the Double Golems, excuse me, um, Krug here and Gromp here. So he has so many things he should be taking on bot side of the map. So it's really awkward for Rek'Sai to walk all the way top to try to help the Aatrox just because his wave is frozen. He has to give up a lot. Oh my goodness. Because they were able to get the flash initially. Um, Showmaker just... Oh man, I didn't even realize it until this point. But it's Showmaker top lane with Rex, uh, Renekton. Oh man, the skirmish is really important. Let's replay it. Oh my goodness, Damon, what are you doing? Okay, so I didn't even recognize it until this point. But it's Showmaker top with Renekton. I was gonna say Nuguri all in there, and then I looked at the name tag, I'm like, wait a second, it's Showmaker. Looks like that one just kept trying to switch champions, and they didn't get the matchup they wanted, so they just swapped the players, and the players are going to the non-designated roles just to make sure they can have the better matchup. So that first blood was really good, um, able to kill Aatrox while he has two CS, like this guy is just absolutely out of the game. I'm curious how they lost this. Alright, so they're starting it first on Shrimp. Shrimp gets the jump by using Flash. Canyon doesn't have Flash. Should have been probably a little bit more careful. Nuguri went in there to try to kill off Shrimp because he has no Flash, but Shrimp able to E out. And now Canyon stuck in a bad place. Shrimp a able to live and it's going to be able to close him later. Well, just really excellently played from Shrimp there to Flash on top of Canyon right away. Put him in a really dangerous spot. And when... Noguri went in to try to kill him. He was able to tunnel out and disengage from the fight and then come back in later as his teammates collapsed. Excellently played from the right side. Let me go pause, turn off the fan. Hmm. 
The Aatrox still has his wave stuck, so he, oh man, it's just in a terrible spot for him. He needs someone to come in and unfreeze his wave, and until that happens, he really can't do anything because he has such little items and he doesn't have flesh and he's a low level Aatrox. They actually can't even win 2v2, so I'm curious how Flamingo is going to be able to help their top laner. Looks like the freeze finally broke. Yeah, just watch Shrimp here. Goes on top of Canyon. Tunnels out after getting um, rooted by Nogori. And then able to come back in after healing a little bit with his um, W, which allows you to turn your Rage into health while you're burrowed. And yeah, he just carried that fight. Like, that was straight up Rek'Sai carrying that 3v3. But despite um, only being 300 gold away... Oh my god. Man, this is actually so well played. Flash root and slow going down immediately. You can see the smite coming down immediately. Make sure he slowed. Impossible to dodge the root when he slowed like this. Follow up with the ult. Showmaker, I don't think it's gonna be. Oh man. Wow, that TP response was also extremely quick. He saw him flash and TP response immediately. Excellent. Like. If that TP is even just a second slower, he's not able to get the return kill because he TP'd immediately the moment that gank happened, able to get the kill. Oh my, this is what I mean about like that one gaming spot lane. <laughs> I mean, this gank was kind of overforced and Flamingo bot lane was extremely ready for it, but also just, yeah, this is that one gaming bot lane. Like they often are the ones kind of making the team in a deficit. I see them lose so much 2v2s and lose so much 3v3s from boss side. Nice roam from Beryl, telling me he's not that bad of a support, but also a little bit greedy of Flamingo to try to go for something here. Because it's on a timing where the enemy bot lane died, so enemy support died, so he's kind of resetting first, so he's going to be faster in terms of getting on the map. And he's also a uh, pike. So they think they catch Nuguri out, so they're going for him. Nuguri able to kite away nicely, Talia coming in, and then the Pike coming in after to finish the kill. They got a little bit too antsy and they thought Nuguri was out of position. And it would have been so much better after Shrimp got his level 6 to go for stuff like that. This Aatrox is just never going to come back into the game. That's a huge problem that Flamingo has to find a solution for. Even with like all these mistakes that Damwon is making, one huge problem they have they don't have a solution to is our Aatrox cannot be part of the game right now. How are you going to get the Aatrox back into the game? That's perfect timing for the backup. And also the Caitlyn Thresh lane didn't have that much health from jungler, so as a Caitlyn, if you're even farming with the Kai'Sa, then that's not a place where you want to be. Yeah, this is the thing we mentioned, the Aatrox has no place in the game. Basically, he's just, he's not there, he's not part of the game. But going back onto like the Kai'Sa Caitlyn point, as Caitlyn, one of your strengths is extremely dominant laning phase. Like, and you kind of fall off um, until you get your crit items. And even when you do get your crit items, your attack speed is much slower than other AD carries, so you're not as a massive damage dealer in team fights. and down one gaming, just giving away free kills again. So there, people have found some workaround regarding Caitlyn's um, damage being bad in team fights with clever usage of auto attack canceling when people are trapped and you can use headshots, so you can actually break your attack speed cap and animation cancel um, headshots in there. But that's not enough to really push Caitlyn into this like amazing pick and it is still very important you win your lane and when the Caitlyn lane goes even, she actually is comparatively a lot worse than most of the ADs played, especially something like a Kai'Sa who has insane playmaking tools, can self peel. Like this Caitlyn later, when the Ryze or the Renekton or even the Talia gets on top of her, like she's gonna be helpless, she's just gonna be free gold. Thresh is okay peel but Thresh isn't like a peel, like he isn't like a designated peel champion. If he's able to um, cancel Renekton's dashes or able to hook Renekton out of the dash, then sure, but that's something extremely hard to do, especially versus players like Showmaker and especially when Renekton's are smart enough to open fights with Flash. 
Like, there's no peeling when people open fight with Flash RW on Renekton. Down one with the top lead they have taking Herald. This timing for Herald is very, very tight. They have about one minute to use it before plating goes down. They're gonna rush straight to mid lane and use it. Yep. Just very important to use Herald to get plating. It just is extra gold on top of it. Most of the time it ends up being yeah, about 300 extra gold. You can even get more. Now down one's in their comfort zone. Um, Reddington has his first item finish, Rydem has, Rise has his first item finish, they're gonna try to split push, they're gonna use Pike roaming, and what is it, they're gonna use their Talia backing up their solo laners to get really leaves and side lanes, like this is where Dom one really shines, when people are in split push situations. Oof. Nice try from Flamingo to try to catch Nuguri out, but Nuguri luckily had flash up. Yeah, playmaking around side lane. This is. They're gonna get slowly get vision for their solo laners. Take the neutral objective and dragon and get deeper vision and leave the game in a state where it's 1v1 or 2v2 versus one of their solo laners and they're so comfortable taking that skirmish. They're just like, come here, let's take the skirmish. Ooh, 4v1 collapse actually. Wow, Flamingo so fast with their collapses. Still able to trade one for one. Oh man. Wow, let's replay that. Flamingo recognized that's exactly what Damon wants to do. Like, take the skirmish and the side lane. Like, this team's surprising me. Like, this Flamingo team, they're not rolling over to Damon. They're actually matching them, even with that abysmal early game from the Aatrox. Sure, Damon's bot lane bled a lot, but still, like, they basically were playing 4v5 for the first, like, 15 minutes of the game. Nuguri on top of turret. Everyone collapsing in from Flamingo. Three people collapsing in. Thresh getting the Rek'Sai in there. Flashing the Lantern, making sure he gets closer in. But Rek'Sai instead taking the tunnel. If he waited until he got uh, Lantern all the way in and then took the tunnel, it might have been better. Aatrox showing up behind them. Rek'Sai able to get the knock up on Ryze. Killing the Ryze, but Ryze still did a lot of damage. You can check the Rek'Sai is healthier and Thresh is healthier and rested down one closing in. Even though Nogori died without being able to kill anyone in return, he still got so much damage off in that fight and ate a lot of flashes. He ate um, the Rek'Sai flash, he ate the Thresh's flash. Oh, how do you miss that hook? Man, I, I think this is like a hook that has to hit. You also have mobility boots, so you can keep closing in distance. Like if you're not confident, you're gonna hit your hook. That's so bad he missed the hook there. Not able to kill the Rek'Sai. Oh, Rek'Sai just dodging the um, Pike, but Kai'Sa finishes are off with the W. Caitlyn joins the fight, has to flash away immediately from the um, Talia. I don't know, and the Pike got hit by a random ass um, <laughs> Nico root. Honestly, if the support played a little bit better there, I think that one definitely could have cleaned this up a lot more. But still very impressive from Flamingo matching down one. Now down one's in a little bit of an awkward spot. Um, Nuguri TP'd up top for a tempo to make sure he can be on the map faster and to push in a lane. But they are missing flashes on so many members and they're also missing teleports on their solo laner. So when they are playing to the side lanes, like the kind of the mm, help from the side lanes is going to take a lot longer. Like the other side of the map, it's gonna have to walk all the way over. They can't just TP up there. So that one has to be a little bit more creative on terms of how they wanna play out rest of this mid game. Now you can see the pike missing the hook, going in there, trying to ult, and then hooked the Nico and got hit by the root while he was in the W and then died. I hate to pick on just one player like this, but there was so much mistake coming out from the pike in that small skirmish. Flamingo trying to open up in mid lane towards the Kai'Sa. Down one with the still game, still the same game plan, play to the side lanes. Now they're going for the rides. Like they, wow, Flamingo, one thing I'm so impressed by all these play-in teams is they understand 
how the enemy, like Major Razor team, wants to play. Like Unicorns of Luck with Clutch, they knew they really wanted to play towards Huni topside, and instead of shying away from it, they just matched them. Like they aren't scared. I love watching teams play like this. When we saw um, Isaris Gaming play versus Splice, they just played so scared. Also, let me turn off the fan again. Yeah, going back onto my point regarding play in teams, I love how active they are being, and I love how so willing they are to kind of match these teams and their strengths and like how they play the game. Like when we saw Isra's play earlier um, versus which we call it Splice, they just play so scared, and yeah, I was just not impressed at all. Like Spawn hyped them up so much, he said he they would finish first in their group, but. They were just so passive and to watch a playing team just play with full confidence and not be nervous on an international stage playing versus a Korean team. It's just so nice to see. Pike finally hitting a crucial hook there. Showmaker opening up on the side. Finishing off the Thresh. Yeah. And once they get like these kind of fight, like game is like game just blows up. Because one, the solo laners are gonna be extremely ahead. Aatrox still out of it for most of it, and Nico also going to be behind, and one thing that teams like Damwon will do once they get this kind of lead is they won't let go. I want to see them reset immediately and get ready for the next play. Let's see how this opened up. Pike finally opening up with a nice hook here, and then Talia finished, or following up through with the damage. Shrimp just in a really awkward spot, like beautiful timing on the knockback, got getting him as right he's coming out of the status. Showmaker all the way in there. This is a Renekton with Shoujin, so his cooldowns are just non-existent. He basically doesn't have cooldowns when it's Renekton with Shoujin using his spells properly. And yeah, as I talked about, like Caitlyn just so free in a team fight. Barrel dies. Nuguri tanking tower. Able to flash out the last tick of the Aatrox Q and able to live. And now when Damwon gets up, gets back on the map, it just so hard for Flamingo to play the rest of the game out. Yeah, the Goldie is just gonna balloon from here. They can't deal with the side laners anymore in Showmaker and Noguri. And once Damwon gets a crucial kill, because they also have the Earth Drake, they're going to go straight for Baron. It's just going to take one or two kills, and Damwon is ready to pull the trigger on Baron. The Kai'Sa has two items, like the Renekton fed as hell, the Talia is also fed. The only thing bad is they don't have a tank for Baron, but they're going to be able to melt it pretty quickly because they have Earth Drake. Yeah, normally Aatrox versus Renekton in a side lane can be competitive, and Aatrox can even win, but that's not the case in this game. Like, Aatrox is never going to be beating the Renekton. So they're always going to be slower from a side lane. Just one pick, that's what that one's waiting for. One pick and straight into Baron. The Baron's going to melt like that. Earthstrike just changes kind of the, I would say, the flow of the game, because... Now you have to be so deathly scared. People are gone for 10 seconds. That might mean Baron is gone. Like that's how much strength Earth Drake has in competitive play. I think it is one of the most overpowered RNG aspects of competitive right now. When teams get Earth Drake with certain comps, like you can't even lead Baron for like 10 seconds. So Flamingo, what they're doing is they're grouping up, taking, trying to take control of Baron Vision, making sure they have some lights up in here. Because once Dode's Vision goes down and once the lights are out, it's going to be so hard to, it's just going to be extremely hard for them to um, walk even close to Baron. And that one has so much pick tools with Talia wall and Pike Q, like it makes them extremely scared. Yep, that one going to clear out the vision. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. They just push them out and they bought enough space. They're able to rush Baron like this. This is what Earth Drake does. It is such a broken aspect of the game. Yeah. Just I 
Sure, we can talk about the fight, but the core of this game was Dom1 got a lead, their side layers were able to push up, they had an earth strike, once they controlled Baron, like it was gonna crumble like this sooner or later. It didn't take a kill for them to rush Baron, it just took them buying space and teleporting 5 man with Rise and just taking Baron like that. That was a very practice play, Dom1 knew exactly what they wanted to do, they were either looking for a pick or they were looking for towards pushing people out and teleporting straight in for the Baron. And Flamingo took the fight right after, which I actually think is pretty good that they took the fight right after, because if they allow Dom1 to go back and buy and spend their gold and then get back into lanes and then take turrets and then take the fight, then Flamingo has no shot at winning the game. But if they take the fight right after they take Baron before they are able to spend their gold and they are somewhat chunked from doing Baron, they at least have a chance to win the team fight. And if they win that team fight, they can get they can get back into the game. So I actually think it was correct call for them to take the fight, regardless of how hard that fight was. Well, I think it's going to be a quick ending to this game now. They're just going to split and yeah, I don't think they're able to really deal with the split in any direction. One for one trade, but now their base is in ruin. They're going to be able to take three inhibitors here. It's going to be over. Wow. Oh my god. Teleporting minions and holy shit that BM. Holy, you had to do it to them. Well, down one acing flamingos in their base with the minion teleport from the rides. I love the BM. Usually, as, especially when I was coaching, I hated people doing BM. And I just thought it was so cheesy and tacky. But I've loosened up a lot more as a content creator. And people are having fun with the game and I think it is so important to have showmanship on a world stage and kind of make a name for yourself because that's what pro players are. They are entertainers and was are you not entertained? What an excellent game from Dom1. I would love to see their bot lane pick it up but yeah. Name one other team that could do this. I guess G2 could do it where the solo laners, their champ pull and their mechanics are so good and so deep they can just interchangeably play champions. Like which mid laner can just play Renekton top, which top laner, or which mid laner can just play Rise top, which top laner can just play, um, oh my god, you know what I mean, who can just change roles like that, and change champions like that, and play seamlessly, like, they just play those roles, like, they were, it's like, your top laner is able to play mid lane at that kind of excellence, that's just crazy, so, down one, love the game from you, and can't wait to see more from you, and let's get you into group D and make an interesting group D. I hope you guys enjoyed this VOD review and loco out.